Hello and welcome everyone to the SCURF community call for September 29th, 2022. Uh, today we are going to talk about commenting, comment engagement on the forum, kind of discussion quality, how do we know if there's good discussion quality, the tools that we have, community input, stuff along those lines. Um, I'm going to give a relatively briefish conversation, kind of talking about those metrics from the engagement and moderation perspective. And then I'm looking forward to having some discussion uh, as well about those things. Uh, but before we get started on that, uh, I know that there are a variety of things happening around the SCURF ecosystem. So um, are there any things that people would like to announce, you'd like people to attend, things along those lines uh, before we get started on our discussion about commenting and engagement? I'd love to shout out the Infinite Machine Reading Group meeting on Monday at 9 a.m. Um, it's been a fun read, a lot of history of Ethereum. Um, and the next section of the book, which is the second half, really dives into what happens to Ethereum after the ICO um, and how does it keep building. If you missed the first section, it was pretty spicy. We talked about how Hoskinson got outed from the Ethereum Foundation. Um, and um, look forward to seeing a summary on the forum as well as some discussion questions. Hopefully you can join us. Uh, if you haven't read the first section of the book, no worries. Uh, you can also just come to chat and talk about the book um, or anything about Ethereum. It should be fun. Monday, 9 a.m. Uh, and let me drop a link in chat. Awesome. Thank you. That was definitely one of the things that I was going to announce if someone else didn't do so first. Uh, anything else that people would like to announce? Any, anything going on in the coffee house today, Jonathan? Uh, nothing is planned, but we'll hang out for a bit if anyone wants to come chat about any research they find on the forum or just want to talk about SCURF in general, and we'll stick around. I think we might shift this to twice a month in terms of like having a format, like a formatted discussion uh, about a piece of research, but we'll always be down just to get together for an hour and talk. Cool. Thank you for that. Uh, related to forum activity, I'm going to put a link here in uh, the messages as well. Do not forget, we are near the end of the month. And since we are near the end of the month, let's make sure that anyone who's had good contributions that you've noticed on the forum during the month uh, get the recognition that they deserve. Uh, so please make sure to nominate people for the comment of the month. Uh, there, I've kind of linked to the thread there. And that is now, right? So we have a kind of a new system uh, that we were trialing out this, I was going to say this week, but nope, this month of putting the nominations up on the form itself. There's a process for how to do that um, and kind of what are some criteria that we are looking for. We're going to talk about comment of the month uh, later as well in uh, our discussion about kind of community input uh, and things along those lines. Uh, yeah, Mikhail. Go for it. If you are speaking, we can't hear you. OK, well, then we'll move on uh, for uh, other announcements. So there's kind of the comment of the month end of the month stuff. Uh, also related to end of the month stuff is uh, during next week, we will have the um, calculation of source cred. So if you have been participating on the forum uh, this last month and you have forgotten to fill out the form uh, that basically associates your username with a wallet so that we can pay you out for the contributions that you've made, uh, or you have forgotten to opt in for this particular month, uh, please make sure to do that in the Discord. There's an opt-in channel, and that is where you can kind of do your opt-in uh, for the source creds uh, for this month. Another thing that we have also uh, made sure to put up on the, um, or that we're gonna be discussing today as we talk about comments. Um, anything else that I've forgotten to remind people about or people wanna bring to the attention for the good of the order? Um. 
Um, yeah, I'll just really quickly, Paul, uh, want to shout out the Research Pulse newsletter one more time. Um, for people who haven't subscribed, you can sign up via Substack or Mirror. Um, and I can drop those links in the chat. The latest issue uh, went out yesterday. So um, definitely subscribe and, uh, and encourage your friends and colleagues to subscribe as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for that reminder. Anything else? Cool, cool. All right, so like I had mentioned at the top of the call, uh, today we're going to talk about kind of commenting, culture, engagement-y stuff uh, on the forum particularly. Um, and I'm going to kind of look at this from kind of four perspectives. So, so really what we're trying to address is what is good discussion uh, or what is good discussion uh, for SCURF? Uh, overall. And so the kind of four perspectives that I kind of want us to think about a little bit is like, what would be good discussion according to some tools? And we're going to talk about some of the tools uh, that SCURF is currently making use of. Uh, we can also talk about like what makes for good discussion or engagement based on what like a moderation team uh, happens to think about the content that is showing up on our comment or on our um, forum. We can also think of this from kind of like a scholarly perspective. So what does research suggest a uh, good discussion is? Like that is like a deep, deep hole. So I promise uh, that we are not going to go all the way down that rabbit hole, but maybe just like look at the fact that that rabbit hole exists. And then last uh, and not certainly not least is for us as a organization and a community. What does good discussion look like? And uh, the reason why I really want to have this conversation is one, for me, uh, as being a part of the engagement vertical, uh, the discussion that we are having on the forum is near and dear to my heart, and I see it as being integral to the mission of SCURF itself, and we can kind of discuss that a little bit. Um, second, I, I think this is a valuable conversation for us to have as a community semi-regularly, uh, just to see if our standards or our thoughts about what our good discussions uh, are changing. Uh, and then also, I think this is a valuable discussion for us to have uh, as we welcome new people in. So we have the the writing cohort, the synthesis cohort is they're going to have their first comments up on the forum on Monday. That is their deadline. Um, and so it helps us do some socializing uh, and kind of what we are, are looking for and also uh, just an opportunity to think about like how are we surfacing like the best comments and to start with like what's a good comment or what are good discussions to help us surface that is kind of a really good platform to start with. So uh, like I had mentioned, I think maybe the first place that I'm going to start talking about this is just from the tools because the tools perspective is always the easiest perspective to think about this. And there's a variety of tools in the Web3 space that we could potentially be thinking about. Uh, but the very first one that we have at our disposal is obviously the forum itself, right? So when we're thinking about discussion at SCURF, when we're thinking about conversations and commenting at SCURF, like we're mostly doing this on our forum. And one of the tools that suggests that like conversation is good, and this is an incredibly oversimplified version about this is what con makes conversation good, is like the forum has trust levels, right? And there are these requirements for how much trust that you have. And part of the trust uh, development is that you engage in good conversation, right? So when you first show up, you kind of have no trust. For the most part, uh, just not doing immediately terrible stuff uh, moves you up to trust level one. And we can see some of these metrics are maybe slightly kind of sort of uh, indicative of what makes for good um, trust or not and kind of interacting with topics, reading other people's comments, um, making sure that you kind of have some like diversity, right? That's part of the trust level, right? So part of what makes for a good discussion is, uh, at least according to this tool, that you kind of have some generalized knowledge about what's going around you. And just putting a lot of emphasis on kind of the reading of content, not just the producing of content. Uh, trust level two uh, suggests that we like, do some other stuff, right? So not only do I read it, but I interact with other people's content, uh, but I also 
other people seem to like the content that I do, um, that again, I have kind of this diversity across different tools or different threads. Um, I'm replying to a variety of topics. I'm entering a lot of topics, right? I'm, I'm actively engaged in other conversations, not just me producing stuff. So uh, one of the things that this tool is highlighting for us is that conversation is not a thing that we get to do all by ourselves and engagement is not a thing we get to do all by ourselves. Um, trust level three, which I hope that all of you eventually get to, right, is like you're consistently here. Um, that you are uh, replying to a variety of different content in public. Um, that you are, again, like still emphasizing, like you're reviewing a whole bunch of stuff, um, and that you're aware of content across the spectrum of conversations that you're having. This is probably gonna help you do something like synthesize information and things like that. Uh, and again, you are, at least tools wise, giving likes and receiving likes as indication that the content you're producing and the content that you're consuming um, is you're, you're in collaboration with that to some extent, right? Likes are not a great uh, measure of that, but to some extent, that's what this tool is suggesting. Another tool that we have uh, here at SCURF, as many of you are aware of, is our implementation of SourceCred. And so SourceCred also has some views of what makes for good discussion or what makes for really good comments. So we have several presentations. Um, if you would like to check this out, I can, if you have not actually checked out our implementation stuff before, there you go. Now you have a link to this particular issue. Uh, but uh, overall, what we kind of are prioritizing in our implementation of source cred is your production of content, replies, uh, some kind of likes, like this is going to increase how much uh, source cred uh, or how much cred that you are minting and how much is kind of flowing to you through your interactions. Uh, our instance also, at least for right now, uh, very strongly prioritizes long-term contribution. So when we run our instance to do the disbursements at the end of every month, we're doing it for the length of time that SCURF has existed, right? So it's not like, uh, for at least what this is saying tool-wise, is that good conversation at SCURF is not something that you do like in one weekend and ta-da, you successfully good conversed, right? Instead, it is suggesting that there is long tail value that old information has value at SCURF based on how we have our tool set up. So um, in some ways you can see that in our edge weights and all that if you want to explore that. And so like good conversation would show up then in these cred uh, rank logs. So if you're interested in what your cred rank is when you get disbursements, um, they show up here. Um, and if you're interested in how those come to, there's also a guild that meets uh, uh, the second Friday uh, of every week. So we have these tools going on at scurf that kind of suggests what is or is not a uh, good conversation but has as been discussed multiple times throughout um the time that i've been at scurf is we don't at least right now want to exclusively rely on robots to tell us what good conversations are so we have a moderation team so what is a moderation team says makes for some good discussions and this is something that shows up in the moderation team meetings very often this is just uh, one example of a time where we were kind of discussing what makes quality discussion and like how might we be able to measure that or how might we be able to highlight these types of things so uh, we are able to like really good discussion leads to a brand new question that people hadn't thought about before um, or a new perspective like framing the problem in new and interesting ways uh, really valuable to us and this because this is mission aligned for scurf is that it's leading to some types of action steps uh, or that it is fleshing out or making sensible connections between this piece of research and that piece of research um, so that we can do or that those are all things that we as like a moderation team are looking to encourage and when people aren't doing that type of stuff right? like that's also on kind of the moderation team's agenda right when we're you're not really kind of speaking to the other content that had shown up uh, when something is maybe just off topic compared to what the rest of the conversation is and there's seemingly no reason uh, why that is happening. Uh, those are all kind of things that the moderation team is kind of doing internally to curate and look for and moderate uh, for what makes for good discussion 
on the forum, right? So are they citing stuff? Are they kind of supporting their ideas and things like that? So that's kind of the moderation team um, perspective. So we have tools, we have what the moderation team is looking for. Um, then we have kind of like I had mentioned that called that scholarly perspective and there's depth, I mean, there's incredible depth on what various research disciplines suggest would make for good um, quality conversation. Uh, some of that has to do with the roles that people take, right? So a good conversation, we will see kind of a variety of roles that people are taking or kind of content that people are producing. So um, some people are kind of leading that conversation uh, by seeking out you know, opinions, right? So we would call that in at least field of communication, opinion seeking type of tasks, right? So you are in a conversation and you want to make sure that you get a variety of opinions around a, a piece of conversation, right? That would be something um, that's going to lead to good conversation is a variety of opinions get to be shared. Uh, we also would have someone who's seeking information, right? So we don't just want in a good conversation, you don't just want uh, like hot takes, right? We would also like to have some information as well. So we're looking for that type of stuff. Uh, we would look for someone who's maybe playing a contrarian role a little bit or kind of playing devil's advocate. Like, so maybe this is our consensus, but is it a good consensus? And like people are kind of doing that type of work. Um, and then also we have like, so those are kind of task behaviors. Uh, research also suggests that you can't just do task behaviors. Sometimes you got to do some relationship maintenance as well. So that's part of a good conversation too. So things like harmonizing. So that's giving praise and kind of, if there's a good contrarian, you kind of need to have a good harmonizer too that says, oh, that's really cool. I'm glad that you were kind of doing this devil's advocate work, uh, but also, you know, it looks like we have some type of consensus here. Um, so those would all be parts of what make for good conversation, right? You have these people who are doing various tasks, so information seeking, opinion seeking, uh, they are kind of doing some contrarian work, they're doing some harmonizing work, uh, they are supporting people's work, right? But what we're also looking for in a good conversation is that not just to happen um, from a single person every single time, and that would be the only contributions that they make. Uh, when it comes to interactions online, which a forum would be, uh, there's some really good work by um, Walther and Buns uh, back in like the early 2000s, uh, which talked about how when you are in these online tech space environments, uh, that people have to kind of do these hybrid roles that we would see in conversations. Uh, very often, like a group, if you're part of a, a solid group, like you have a bunch of friends, maybe you are always a particular maintenance role or you're always a particular task role. Uh, but when we're dealing with online interaction, we kind of have to do these things um, in a hybrid way so that people are doing task and maintenance work simultaneously uh, that, you know, to move a conversation forward, uh, we have to make sure that we are doing multiple of those roles. Right? So if I'm going to be a devil's advocate, maybe a devil's advocate for a little bit, do some maintenance, also kind of backfill with some logic and reason uh, as well, right? Because that's not something that we have discussed so far is like, where does that logic and reason show up? Um, kind of supporting our points and things like that. Uh, but that's a little bit of what kind of some academic views would say uh, on what makes for good conversation. Um, but then maybe last, like I said, certainly not least, is what do we want our good conversation to be? So kind of looked at a little bit of what our tools have set up uh, us to do. So here's what discourse does or does not allow. Uh, here's kind of what our current implementation of source cred biases uh, that we've also kind of looked at. Here's what the mod team is biased by. And because I am part of the mod team, I mean, some of the stuff that is coming from that moderation team is also being influenced a little bit, uh, as you can see in this particular issue. Some of the ideas from like the field of communication of what makes for good conversations and things like that. Um, but it's also connecting very strongly to what is our overall mission, right? So our mission is this kind of connecting researchers and builders, uh, but there's this focus on collaboration on solutions, right? So this bias towards action. Um, that we are looking to make practices better or advanced practices. Uh, and I, from my bias, believe that discussion is a good way to do that. Uh, and that we're also trying to share some resources, right? So the moderation practices are looking to see if people are working towards 
actionable solutions in their conversations. See if people are trying to understand, advance, question, um, make sense of the different solutions or practices that a piece of research or a discussion is talking about. Uh, and then also getting people to share additional resources, like what backs up your claim, right, is really valuable because it helps us to uh, understand what, like, you know, where are you getting this information from? And the more we can share that information, the better off we kind of all are, right? So there's that bias in the moderation team as well. Um, but then there's us. And we as a whole community also have some tools to kind of shape and indicate uh, what we think is good conversations, right? So for example, one of the reasons why we have this comment of the month thread is not just to kind of recognize the really good work that people are providing, but this is a very public way of indicating what does the SCURF community think a really good contribution is, right? So part of what we're asking people to do um, when they are making a nomination is, you know, why did you think it was good? Right? These are just potential reasons why you might think it is good, but, you know, here's some things, here's some values, here's part of the culture that SCURF is growing uh, that says this makes for a good contribution to a conversation or a discussion, right? Nominating people for having done that, regardless of if at the end of the month when you all vote on these things, uh, if that actually wins or not, just the nomination kind of is a way for the community to indicate whether or not they think that this is a good contribution or not. So um, as a tool, this is, I think, a really valuable tool for us as an organization to make use of to kind of solidify what is kind of the culture we're trying to make when it comes to good conversations. Because if we see a lot of people nominating similar type of work, more people are likely to actually do that type of work. Other types of tools that we have are like just the kind of the discourse tools, right? So uh, here is the community category thing. Um, let's say that you're reading this thing and you're like, Paul, that is absolute garbage, right? So I'm gonna withhold a, I'm gonna withhold a like on that, right? So I'm not gonna like that thing. Uh, but also, as long as you are more than a trust level zero, you can flag this type of content as well. Um, and one of the reasons why I wanna bring this tool uh, up is uh, the moderation team has actually been surprised that we don't see more flagging. Um, I think that is indicative of one of two things, and maybe it's a little bit of A and a little bit of B. A could be there's just nothing but perfectly wonderful content on the forum, which we actually do have a lot of really good, wonderful con content on the forum. I really like the direction that most of the conversations are going. Uh, but the B part is I don't necessarily know if people want uh, to take this type of an action, right? Um, or these don't necessarily make sense. So this is a thing that we as a community can kind of figure out. This is something we can optimize, right? We can make changes, we can edit this. Um, a lot of the things that are like, okay, quality content, you're like, eh, you kind of move that conversation in a direction, but like not particularly moved it in a direction, right? We can potentially agree that that's off topic or we could, clearly define as something else, right? So this is something that I would love for our discussion to kind of help move us. Like, right? So if those flag tools are going to be good, then um, we need to make sure that it's indicating to people how to use it and to encourage people to use it if they think that it's a good thing to do. Um, another thing that I think could potentially also help us with like putting stuff out that we think is cool is you know just sharing these types of things so one of the things that the moderation team does is uses these types of links to draw people's attention to particular comments of interest or to draw people's attention to topics of interest to scurf organizationally uh, but it's not just the moderation team that can do that um, overall what i would really like to see kind of the next step in scurf moderation slash curation um, development is this idea of like how can we use these types of tools uh all in addition to that right so the moderation team is slowly starting to work on uh creating header con content and discussion summary posts right so what's happening in a discussion and what's good about that uh, particular discussion and putting that right there and then using space at the top uh, and I will find an example of where we did this in a moment. Um, 
but giving people a, hey, here's key questions that have not been asked yet. And as soon as you get to this, you can see that there's space for key questions that haven't been asked or haven't been answered yet. Um, here's where interesting conversations start, right? So all that type of things, uh, if people are kind of indicating in the comments, like, hey, I really like that you opened up this question. Um, that's giving the moderation team some explicit ways of being able to highlight what's great. Um, you can do that on the form, or you could also be doing that in our Discord and chat. Uh, but kind of the more that we as a community see the quality of content and uh, what we think is good conversation uh, and kind of surfacing that using the tools that we have, and then also just like the community that we're building, um, the better off I think our forum will be, the more mission aligned I think that the forum will be because it's getting that discussion to help us achieve our ends and things along those lines. So that's kind of like my overview of like discussion and discussion quality and, and kind of maybe some institutional knowledge of where we have been, um, where we have been growing from the past. Uh, but I also really want to make sure that these calls uh, are discursive, right? Like that we can have some discussions about these things. So we can evaluate our tools. Uh, we can talk about what we think makes for good conversations. Uh, we can talk about the process or like how do we incentivize a community to also be part of these processes. Um, all of those things I think would be incredibly interesting. And we can look at some initial comments. So Stephanie uh, points out that the inappropriate flag um, is maybe something that we could modify uh, that the reasonable person language could get dropped out of that. Um, is there a reason why you would want to modify or take out the reasonable person language in particular? I feel like that might incite potentially a flame war from individuals. And that might, that's one of those terms that might have enough ambiguity that it gets, I don't know, we might have some like external discussion about that then so if everything got wrapped into community code of conduct and then we just said does this post violate the community code of conduct and have everything that comes after like reasonable person be in like the code of conduct yeah that makes some sense um yeah chris go ahead this actually kind of goes on the same line in that one of the things that's missing is plagiarism there's no like way to report plagiarism but it's also something that we could very easily automate like for plagiarism detection in that um i was thinking about when you're framing like what makes a good conversation and i'm of the mind that it can't be one person because then it's not a dialogue it's a diatribe so i think in the sense of like a good conversation has multiple perspectives and is not dominated by one voice and this is where um, at the same time, it's also accessible from uh, expert down to layperson. So, like a layperson should not feel intimidated to enter that conversation. So, I think it's like there's a balance of making a conversation accurate, technically not being too heavily reliant upon indus industry specific jargon, while also moving towards a uh, culture that takes in the academic culture of anti-plagiarism in that um, I don't think industry is, much, is as much concerned about plagiarism in certain forms. There's like intellectual property protections and copyright protections, but plagiarism specifically is not really something that um, is much of a concern outside of academia because academia is a lot like the product is their output in, in the form of writing so if someone's being plagiarized that is their intellectual property being attacked so that's why i think it's important that we build a culture of protecting uh ideas by actively going uh to make sure that we're preventing plagiarism or at least like discouraging it yeah so i like that uh, model of um, it's about protecting or acknowledging ideas. So one of my concerns always with automated plagiarism detection um, is in order to do that successfully, I think this could be like a whole other um, 
rabbit hole, right? But in order to allow that to happen, right? So that there's some machine learning stuff that goes there. Like basically we're just like giving some entity everybody's content that it can be doing some comparisons with. And like, I don't know how comfortable I always am with that. Uh, but the other thing is like, I think the way that plagiarism is taught and frequently discussed is, is like, it's just a bad thing and don't do that. And that's like cheating. Um, and I think that that is just like a really super lazy way to discuss what plagiarism actually is. Like it is about, you know, basically borrowing or take it's stealing someone else's credibly made argument or trying to pass that off as uh, one's own, um, like not, you know, so it's not like you're not allowed to take other people's ideas, synthesize with those ideas, iterate off of those ideas. Like we're not talking about intellectual um, property, right, in a similar type of way, uh, but it's like misrepresenting, like, like you said, it's, it's theft and misrepresentation of that idea. And you can build a culture around that as opposed to just like, it's bad. So um, I want to make sure that we do something like that. Uh, when we build that culture of it's more than just like it's bad and don't do it because it's bad I, I think the rationale for why it's bad is super important um, but i'm also interested in those automated systems and what people think about kind of where people's content goes that feeds those automated systems but we can also talk about some of the other elements that we had discussed yeah chris even if it's not comparing to external uh indices in that it should be comparing to external uh, data sets, but we're not even comparing it to our own internal. So if somebody's like copying or plagiarizing like an original poster from a thread, that's also something that should be flagged in that it's not actually moving conversation forward for someone to just come in and regurgitate what has been said, unless they're doing it in a way that is making it more accessible language. That's some, that's, but that's not plagiarism. So this is also the need to articulate the difference between um, minutes or uh, conversation uh, summaries versus someone who's attempting to pass off previously stated ideas as if they came up with them. And those are two completely different things, which is where I think we are encouraging summarization when it's meant to condense or make something more understandable that has like, for example, the NFT conversation between two lawyers, one from the United States and one from Britain, that would be very useful to, for someone to summarize the uh, the final points of what was said. However, that person would also need to be capable of understanding it. So it's also like not the average person can come in and summarize the conversation between two lawyers, but a summary would be useful as long as it's not meant or it's not passing itself off as someone creating a new novel idea that is actually interpretation of ideas that were previously stated yes right so that is definitely a thing that internally or as an organization like i think that that would be appropriate for people to be flagging and trying to differentiate um and those discussion points, right? So that is a thing that actively the moderation team is trying to make. Like, so how do you synthesize? Here's where this discussion has gone so far so that you could read this one post. Um, but we are working very hard to make sure that it's not just like a list of quotes or just uh, unattributed quoting, um, but like it's its own thing. Um, and then also giving people through tagging uh, the appropriate attention uh, and acknowledgement um that we would deserve right because those are very different things so i see where you're coming from on that thank you um mikhail go ahead can you hear me yes now we can okay i'm i'm lagging a little bit so if i if you can't hear parts of what i'm saying let me know um i think plagiarism is a good point um but i think there's a difference between outright copy and pasting and saying it's it's yours and inciting your sources right because you could easily copy and paste cite the source give credit to where, cre where credit's due and then deconstruct what you're saying so it's it's 
it's able to reach a, a broader audience. And I think in these posts, mm -hmm. so we have the opportunity to do what the so I think we lost you a little bit um, there at the end, but I think we got the, the general sense here of, you know, citing sources is valuable. Normal academic student. Yes, yeah, so citing sources are valuable. I do think one of the things that we value. And I think some of the things that we value research. also, though, is what Mikhail was mentioning of that elaboration after a quote from and then chris if you want to jump in also different places I can... paraphrase it in your own words if you're using an outright source format that in a specific... okay i can specific speak specifically to that in a... epa format we Same we've Yeah, I don't know if we you can, have Mikhail, sorry. your your connection's broken. Um, but we actually were, talked about this very early on, and the issue is that there's different there's different standards of citations. So we try to push like whatever the person prefers. It's like they should use that type of citation, but the form automatically implements IEEE citation format to encourage people to adhere to that type of. Guide. Um, formatting and citation. So that's like, again, this is calling back to Mind academic it. citations models. So to potentially jump into that and to remain impressed by the world's greatest lag, like I agree that is impressive lag. Um, kind of jumping back, I also don't want this to just be a discussion about like citation and plagiarism because we are trying to um we're also trying to have like a discussion here so um we're, we're not looking to produce a whole bunch of like footnotes on our our threads uh but instead this is going to be discussion oriented so but i do like the idea like we want to make sure that we are attributing where this information is coming from uh we are also trying to make sure that we are uh, backing up what we say, right? Like that is a valuable part of the mission, I think, of what SCURF is after, right? So we are trying to do the very difficult work of having conversations around uh, research and around uh, where that research can go and how it can be applied. And so providing, especially because we are trying to have conversations on like the cutting edge of something, right? Um, making something relevant, like pulling something into the conversation, um, old sources, new sources um, would be incredibly valuable. Uh, but having those sources helpful, but we also don't just want it to be like a list of citations, right? So adding that extra kind of human components, why we're having humans do this, uh, that human thought that moves the conversation towards uh, actionable and moves that conversation towards brand new questions, helps us surface those questions and things along those lines. Um, in the spirit also that Chris has also acknowledged of not trying to dominate various conversations. Uh, I would also love to know what other people kind of feel are valuable, like what makes for a good conversation. If you're going to take the time to read through a conversation, because that's in some ways what we are partially asking uh, our demographics to do. Um, what is worthwhile reading about what makes a conversation worth reading and then the next step is worth contributing to so where do people kind of fall in line there happy to share some thoughts uh the best conversations i've ever had are not guided by anyone or anything they are they could not be written on a forum that then someone would go and read and enjoy reading. Uh, it, it's I think they're two different things. Having a conversation on a forum and having a discussion, uh, they're, they're just two very different formats. I don't think they work well together. So the, yeah, I guess that's just the, the base thought. 
So I get where you were coming from there, right? So uh, a forum is as a tool, um, many times uh, less immediately reactive. Um, one does not have maybe the same sense of presence. Uh, and then the way that SCURF is kind of implementing our forum and the types of discussions that we are looking to have are um, like kind of doing some deep dives and like analysis work, right? So uh, in some ways we can kind of think of it as being an exchange of research letters more than anything, or maybe not more than anything, but that's a potentially um, an analogy that could work, right? It's an exchange of long form letters. Um, but I do think that there's still some like conversational elements or discussion elements that make a discussion on a forum more or less compelling. That doesn't mean that we always are going to do that for every piece of research, but um, I think that there is something compelling about discussion every now and then. Yeah, Chris, do you mind? Uh, do you mind if I respond to that before you go? I mean, if you want to, you can go ahead, but I was actually going to speak to it because this is something that we actually have discussed in the history of the organization. Um, and it's like, if, if you want to go ahead, but I think you'd actually... Go ahead. Go. Yeah. So one of the issues is, as you're pointing out, in real-time conversation, like just what happened, that couldn't happen on a forum. And your capacity to weigh my uh, immediate real-time reaction allowed the conversation to change a direction multiple times. That can't happen on a forum. But maybe it shouldn't happen on a forum in that there are real-time conversations which we encourage in the form of these types of chats. Then there is the synchronous slash asynchronous text chats that happen. And then there's the long form uh, goal of the forum in that sometimes some conversations need more time to happen in that, like, if I really need to think about something, I don't want to have to immediately respond within this call. I may need like two weeks to think about it. And by the time I come back, I don't want that thread to be lost in other texts. So there is like, there are more long-term conversations, there are medium-term conversations, and then there are short-term conversations. Whereas the real-time community like chats that we have are meant to capture that type of free flow conversation that can't really be reproduced in, in a forum as you point out. And we, we're not trying to reproduce that type in a forum because that type it's like more short-term base thinking whereas the forum is meant to capture long-term well thought out responses that are not just immediate visceral responses whereas visceral responses have value and that's where we need to have something that captures the visceral response which is why we record these chats and then make them accessible to the community so the community can not have to feel that they need to be present in this real-time chat to understand what happened because then they can go access it through the form of a video and that that like archiving process is something that was very much thought out so that people are still able to be involved in these conversations even if they can't be present in real time and john if you want to elaborate off of that I have lost the thought. It will come back, though. Okay, that works. Uh, to the long-term value of that discussion, right? So that is certainly something that we are trying to um, capture here. Umar, I don't particularly want to like 100% put you on the spot, but I am going to do that, even though I don't want to. Because uh, I do know that Hi. this is something that I think you have been thinking about a little bit also with like the peer review, right? So part of the idea of peer review is multiple people. So from like this, or multiple people having kind of a long-term opportunity to kind of interact with some content. So in that idea of peer review or the ideas of distributed peer review, have there been any things that you have run across that um, would potentially help us in this conversation about what makes for good discussion on the forum? How do we provide that value through discussion? Um, uh, it's interesting. I think one of the things um, about peer review that we've definitely been thinking about is like just the structure of peer review. Right now, it's very formulaic almost, where it's like, you know, you get sent a paper, you, you uh, provide a list of suggested revisions, um, those get sent to the author, and then often there's very little 
um, back and forth discourse, um, which is maybe one thing discourse uh, can actually help with, which is um, just like making sure that there's that back and forth discussion. And I think one thing John said earlier that really stuck with me was that like, there is a very little difference between an insightful comment and a good peer review. Um, and um, to this question of just like what makes for good conversation, I think it's not that different from what makes for good reading or what makes for good anything um, in terms of information you're ingesting, which is interestingness or surprisingness. If someone says something that's just really surprising, that is the type of information that sticks with you, that, that, that um, you, you take away as like a big insight. And I think maybe the best peer reviews, maybe the best engagements on the forum are the ones when someone says something surprising and yet truthful. And that that's like the, the nuggets that um, we should most be looking for and I think probably uh, highlighting. And then one other thing I'll say is uh, just on this on this topic of like peer review um, and in, insightful comments, this is something people have traditionally done and been very good at, but AI are getting better and better at. And so I think it's also interesting to explore like what does it look like for AI to do this? Um, and whereas AI might be weaker at synthesis, um, uh, unless they have a really big training data set, they are really good at um, some straightforward tasks um, like summarization. Uh, one thing I'm looking into right now is uh, what would it be like to have an AI summary of the infinite machine? Uh, so I'm um, gonna be playing around with some Python and seeing if I can make that stick. Um, if not, I'll just share my scrappy notes, but yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, and I really like the idea of, like, so one of the things that I think that we want to highlight, right? And this is, this is, I think some of the value proposition of SCURF is there are still some things that human beings do better than AI. Um, AI maybe is catching up on summaries, uh, but that idea of synthesis or like you have, um, and I think one of the reasons why it's so valuable that the tool of discourse uh, has uh, a motive or an incentivization to like move up those trust levels of looking at multiple threads and posts is that that is a, a thing that at least right now human beings do better than machines do which is these things are connected even though they don't necessarily inherently look immediately connected uh, and that is maybe where those surprising well um observations can come from it like that's something that is supposedly happens in like a peer review or that's something that we're trying to capture and highlight is like these things together make more sense than they did uh, without and that that becomes actionable or that raises door um questions and uh, anything that we can be doing as a community that helps encourage that i am definitely open to yeah john go ahead yeah so you you've reminded me what i was going to say in a couple different contexts so I, I think the root of the conversation about how the forum gets developed is what are we producing at SCURF, which I still struggle to define. If someone asks me what's the value prop of SCURF, I can't say uh, without struggling. But th there's also this um, fluidity to natural conversation that creates these nuggets that Umar was just talking about. For example, when he finished, the first thing I wanted to do was say, oh my God, have you heard about that thing where this kid apparently is just using AI to write papers and his classmates' papers to get like straight A's? And then that would be comp a completely different conversation that we could have in five minutes uh, that might produce a very insightful nugget about how forums should be structured. Uh, but that's difficult to have on a forum. Um, and it's even more difficult when we structure things very rigidly uh, and tell people that they're structured. Uh, there, there's a, I think there's a difference between actually having people who play specific roles on a forums to get specific outcomes and telling people that these people exist who are going to go play these specific roles, keep an eye out for them sort of thing. Uh, I, I, I think um, there are some great communities out there who have people uh, as part of them who play these roles and none of us would be able to know that they're playing these roles uh, and they produce great outcomes. But all of this to, to synthesize it very quickly or, or, or briefly is there's the fluidity of natural conversation that I don't think can be replicated on a forum. I don't think we should try, but as Chris was saying, we should have outlets for it, like these chats, the coffee house, that sort of thing. And there's also at the root of everything, we should be thinking about the product we want what does it mean to move a conversation forward what does that even mean like what do we want at the end of the forum discussion yeah to that question like to me like um 
if there is an end to a forum discussion. It has produced a variety of previously unexplored questions or um, it surfaces questions that the Web3 space might have that maybe we can look in or out of the Web3 space for answers, right? But we need to know what questions people are asking to um, look for answers for them. Uh, people have produced some type of solution and we can highlight that solution or people have reframed a thing like you are thinking about this in the wrong way and like we need to reframe some questions to me those are all actionable uh, and those would be great things uh, for us to have kind of as quasi goals uh, i also just want to say i agree with you of like making the rule or requiring people to do xyz can sometimes be stifling um, but that kind of goes back to some of our reputation or like some of the um some of the paths uh, that we are looking to kind of get people into, like what are the skill sets we're trying to help people develop? Uh, but yeah, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, so before SCURF, summaries weren't really, I mean, we weren't necessarily the first ones. At, summaries of articles existed, but the way that we started doing them was not something that was prevalent, which is something now is more prevalent in industry and academia. So if you look at this link, academia is selling summaries now. So the idea that Scurf doesn't have a product is like, it, it's looking from a perspective of like, it's not really a product that's meant for industry. It's, it's a gap for researchers where this is an emerging product. And I think one of the issues is like meta research specifically has become more prevalent since 2017 but it's not really caught on yet so there's actually a lot of meta research happening at scurf uh but because it's coming from dsci and web3 it's not really identifying itself as meta research um so that's why it's like if you don't look at it from the perspective of meta research and meta science it's not going to look like there's an actual tangible product but summaries specifically are an actual product that are being sold as summaries uh, by organizations, not SCURF. So that is a product. Yeah, and I think to the point of, you know, in, there's a product for industry in there also, right? So how do you make that tangible and useful um, for industry? And to some extent, I can see that as part of that output of that discussion um, for, a while in my time at SCURF, I kind of thought about um, the forum as being like partially the product of SCURF, um, but my thoughts on that have somewhat changed. Uh, so now I kind of think more of the forum as the factory of SCURF and SCURF produces these types of things, uh, new and innovative insights into um, research, new uh, and interesting ways to apply research to tangible problems, uh, the surfacing of tangible problems that people hadn't considered before, uh, the surfacing of uh, new research avenues that like we just identified the gap because this research found this and this research found this and this industry player is trying to solve this and put those things together. And now we have like a whole, like no one knows what to do. Oh uh, yeah, John, go ahead. So this, this again, two angles to this one is we've had this discussion on a call previously and we it feels like we just moved past it. Like we had a whole long hour discussion about justify SCURF's existence, what are our products? Uh, is there a plan to come like revisit these discussions instead of just make it seem like it's a discussion we're gonna have this week because we have to fill an hour with a discussion? Um, and then the, the second thought there, the second angle is how much of these products that, like I have an idea about what SCURF does and what is product is it very much aligns with what you and Chris have said but I don't think it's actually what it is <laughs> like sure. when objectively look at it is that what we say it is or is that what we actually produce and I don't think it's what we actually produce I think it's what we all want it to produce mm -hmm. no it definitely produces that I think I, I as someone who's done 17 summaries like we definitely produce and especially when it comes to outreach with primary authors like we have started conversations on many subjects and brought in the authors who or uh, wrote the papers and then push the conversation forward with the author's presence. So that's not, it's like, if you don't, if you haven't seen it, then it's not, not going to seem like it's there, but it's definitely happened. So like the idea that we haven't done that is like, uh, I don't, I don't know if that's representative of reality. 
And to your first point there, John, I do think that that is not a thing that we are good at is um, like, when, where do we house these conversations? To some extent, like I would almost say like that, here are the products. Uh, and I know that you kind of took a stab at that on the forum at one point as well, but here are the products discussion would make a lot of sense um, potentially in meta and we can have kind of, we can use our own machine to, to power that, um, which does take us up to time. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't want to lose those threads. And like, I do think that there's some value that, you know, some of these things keep coming back up, um, but that takes us to time. Uh, are there any like last minute 30 second questions that we would like to work through? Cool beans. I hope you all have a delightful rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, and I will see you uh, around SCURF uh, throughout this week and the future.